It is Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Shikari Jackson is going to pop in uh, with us at the bottom of the hour. There's a big story in Austin that has gotten no national attention, and Jakari went out and investigated it. It was a uh, white cop from the info I have, but some are saying Hispanic, I, I don't know, that shot a black guy who was simply walking away from a bank uh, an hour after the bank had been robbed, and the guy that reportedly robbed the bank from the CCTV cameras is a white guy, and the Austin police officer uh, shot the guy in the back of the neck and where's Jesse Jackson? Where's Al Sharpton? And my old point is that, you know, if I want to walk away from a cop, I don't want to get shot in the back of the neck. And I'm not here to go after the police just because they're the police either. It's just, it's weird how when the cops do something like this, the uh, normal, uh, you know, people that run around trying to stir up trouble aren't involved, especially if it's a democratic city. And the only city of any size in Texas that is a red area is Austin, Texas. And that's because of election fraud. It's really a very libertarian, conservative area. Believe me, I've lived here most of my life. My grandparents are from Austin. My mother's from Austin. And uh, everyone, did, did you understand how Terrytown, a tiny group of ultra-rich parasites that uh, feed off all the government programs and inside deals, how they run the city. But around here, uh, there I mean, we have a pretty good police department on average. Uh, for, compared to a lot of cities, I have to be honest about that. Um, but more and more, the cops, like every month or so, are shooting white guys, black guys, you name it, in the back a lot of times. Like, you'll get out of your car when they tell you. Nothing in your hand. The cop will get scared and they'll shoot you. And it's all this instinctive training stuff uh, I understand instinctive shooting is a way to really draw fast, and but they're not gunslingers in the Old West. But that's how they're being trained, and, and it, it does make you a great, quick draw, instinctive shooter. Boom, you know, hit bullseye. I just went and was involved in about 10 different or so shootout uh, deals right when I got out of high school and college. One of my dad's friends, a dentist, his name was Dr. Dillingham. He uh, ended up, he was a nice guy, ended up moving off and working for the U.S. Army as a dentist. Uh, but because uh, he loved guns so much, I'd go out shooting with him and then got into it for a while, didn't have time. I was working so many jobs and getting into radio, but I would go out and do it. I mean, and, 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 and you'd go through these, these uh, courses where you'd have stuff pop out and then you'd shoot it. And I got really good only doing it, I don't know, 10, 12 times, I forget, because they might have 200 people competing in it. I got to be in the top 5% by the time I quit. And there'd be all these cops getting mad. Look at this kid beating this blah, blah, blah. But I was obviously real young and you know, had quick instincts. And I, I wouldn't shoot the family when it popped up. And I wouldn't shoot them. And that was paper targets. People going pop, you know, bam. And then like metal targets coming down, you'd shoot at metal traps. A lot of fun. But uh, I now digress. The point is the cops are training now with laser pointers that, 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 that recoil and, and, and all these different obstacle courses. But the issue is somebody gets out of their car with their cell phone, boom, you're dead. And it's like, well, he thought it was a gun. But that's really scary, folks. And I've told the story before of uh, when I was senior in high school, my mother said, go up to the frozen yogurt place, get me yogurt. So I went out and jumped in the car, drove up, got the yogurt, probably was speeding a bit coming home. Cop sees me, flips around. I turn into my street towards our house, pull over. He walks over, goes, lies his registration. He goes, oh, pulls his gun out, and it's like pointing it at my head. And he's like, get out of the car, get out of the car. And he gets out and goes, oh, sorry, you can go. Uh, I thought your weight belt was a big knife or a gun. Almost blew my head off, folks. So I've experienced this. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Can you believe it? Already the eighth month of 2013 is upon us. It is the first day of August 2013 on this live Thursday edition. Joseph Farah, the head of the Western Journalism Center, uh, the founder of it, and of course the head of WorldNet Daily, a constitutional libertarian conservative uh, outfit. 
will be joining us to cover the waterfront of scandals and corruption and what where he thinks Obama is going to be going in the next uh, three years he's got left or so in office. Farah predicted back during the election we would see massive persecution of the Tea Party, Christians, conservatives, libertarians, and, th and that the gloves would come off when Obama uh, got reelected. And of course, Farah had not supported John McCain four years previously, uh, saying, you know, there's no such thing as lesser of two evils. But he said, you know, maybe that's wrong. We thought maybe a bad socialist president would, would make the Republicans become actual conservatives uh, and could help sweep the nation for American ideas. But it backfired, and the, the kleptocratic mafia has just literally had a, 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 a bum rush orgy of overrunning every liberty we've got, butchering every industry we've got, collectivizing the country, going from 15 million people six years ago on food stamps to 50 plus million and 101 million on some form of food assistance, over 130 million Americans on some form of welfare, and it's just getting worse, and that's their plan. The Cloward and Piven plan uh, is the public plan, uh, and, and of course they had previous plans to that one in the 60s, uh, to bankrupt once free free market countries and to make you dependent and poor. That is the plan. Sorry, socialism, communism doesn't work except for small, tiny groups that run it who are offshore and exempt from it. Uh, it, it it's, it's like trying to explain to people, you know, sh taking a gun and putting it in your head and pulling the trigger with live ammo isn't good for you. And people are like, no, socialism's good. Uh, Obamacare, I get something free. Of course, now it's coming out that it's bankrupting health care, giving nobody anything free, making 60-plus percent of the doctors begin to move to quit, uh, shutting everything down. Oh, and as predicted, they're in the news today. I'm going to get to this saying the answer's total socialist health care now. <gasps> it's going to bankrupt things. Oh, 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 you, uh, oh, you mean... If they pay $21 million to move General Motors to China, that might make D uh, Detroit finally collapse. <gasps> I didn't know that. I, I didn't know if you totally moved General Motors out of Detroit, it might actually put the final nails in the coffin. Gee, who would have thunk that? I mean, I'm not for bailing stuff out because it never works and criminal groups always steal the money uh, one way or another in this kind of system. But if Detroit would have been given $21 billion smackers over the last four years, that place would be revitalized right now. But sorry, it ain't. <laughs> China got the factories. All right, I know I keep harping on that. It's just they're shutting down a power plant every two and a half days in the U.S. Modern construction, totally clean, water vapor, carbon dioxide come out of the stack, nothing else. So they list water vapor and carbon dioxide as toxic waste. And uh, your power prices are going up and America is shutting down. But all the select globalist operations are exempt. They're exempt from the regulations. They're exempt from Obamacare. The Congress is exempt. The IRS is exempted itself. This is called titles of nobility. Why is it in the Constitution uh, that you can't have titles of nobility and be in government? Because a title of nobility doesn't just mean you wear a crown or uh, that you get to go to the elite parties or whatever. It means you get given exemption from taxes, regulations, basically a letter of mark to operate, a license, licensure. And if you don't have the license, you can be destroyed. What did our first and greatest president, George Washington, say? He said, the power to tax is the power to destroy. And what is the IRS doing right now to pro-life groups, libertarian groups, Christian groups, conservative groups, Tea Party groups, any group that is right of Mao Zedong? Seek and, seek and destroy. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Isn't it just sweet? Isn't it just cutie cake? Okay, let me do this. Let me tell you what's coming up today. Joseph Ferrer is going to be with us for a full hour. That's always informative. as He's got his ear to the ground all over the country and worldwide. And then we're going to be uh, speaking, coming up in about 20 minutes with Jacarty Jackson on the big Trayvon Martin scandal you didn't hear about that happened right here in Austin, Texas last week that has gotten zero national coverage. Because, again, we're a democratic city where this went on.
If it's a Democratic-run city, you can just shoot black people all day long if you want. You don't get in any trouble. Uh, but uh, if it's a conservative area and you can make it a left-right issue, well, then, of course, the cops are shooting people all over the country with this instinctive shooting training for no reason. People can have nothing in their hand they got out of the car. Just, ah, I felt threatened. I, I, I shot him. It's like that guy on the dart pad in uh, San Francisco a few years ago making a movie about that, and he... He wasn't even in the fight, wasn't involved, but they, they, they get him down on his belly and they shoot him in the back and the bullet bounces back up through his heart. And then they even took their time taking him to the hospital to make sure he died from what I saw. From, and they confiscated all the footage from people's cameras, but one person was on a train at a stop and it drove off as the cops figured that out and got it all on tape. And the police lied about it and said that he'd attacked them. That's the new thing. The FBI comes to your house and just sets you down for questioning and then you get shot in the back of the head. The old days, the Russians at least took you to a dungeon, interrogated you, kept you a few months, took you out to walk you once a day. You didn't know when you get the bullet in the back of the head. It's kind of a, a humane way to run a Stalinistic murder operation. But, but here, you know, they just come in and get you to answer all the questions and then shoot you in the back of the head. And then admit they kill you and then classify uh, national security the autopsy. It's kind of a... Cool, cool. It's what tough guys do. I mean, it, it's good that the government has no checks and balances and can do whatever it wants. That always goes really well in history. Your bank accounts are safe. Your kids are safe. The government won't start big wars. It can't win. Of course, me megalomaniacs that get control always do. But so what? I mean, you know, we're just cruising towards absolute uh, destruction. Uh, but everything's okay. Uh, let's just drink some more fluoride. Okay, so let me tell you what else is uh, coming up here. Obviously, Snowden granted one-year asylum in Russia. I'm going to get into that first here in a moment. Then U.S. Uh, to conduct joint military exercise in Egypt. You mean the military that we have that's hijacked by foreign banks is to conduct uh, foreign operations. It's important to understand that. And another one here, more Israeli strikes. Likely Syria moves missiles before alleged Israeli strike report says. How Orwellian. Israel's publicly attacking Syria with cruise missiles, but then they won't even admit they're attacking them. <laughs> I tell you, that is 1984 right there. Uh, here's another one. Feds say it's classified info to say who we're at war with. That came out of tech dirt uh, in a congressional testimony. They will not, Congress will not be told uh, who we're at war with. Oh, that's, that's very 1984. Uh, also, Senate kills Rand Paul attempt to cut Egypt aid. Yeah, let's... Uh, Let's not cut the aid to uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, massacring Christians right now. Uh, U.S. House passes Iran sanctions bill to slash oil exports. They've now elected a moderate president, and Iran's trying to work with the West, so it's, it's very important to, uh, to uh, rebuff all of those deals. Uh, Pentagon considers troop reductions due to cuts from sequester. Yeah, they got drones now to do the killing. They don't need troops anymore. And that's just some of the news on that front. A solar flare narrowly misses Earth EMP disaster barely avoided out of the examiner. We're going to be getting to that. That's the kind of stuff we should actually be, be worried about. Rand Paul strongly hints at 2016 presidential run. Uh, we've got um, what will become of Trayvon's hoodie, the latest piece of uh, iconic uh, trial evidence for the Smithsonian. And the uh, George Zimmerman was pulled over in outside Dallas, Texas, in Forney. I dated a girl from Forney once, and um, he was pulled over, and he had a gun. He was speeding, and the cop figures out it's George Zimmerman. Says, "Well, let me get you out, cut you loose here without a uh, a ticket, just with a warning." Cop didn't want to deal with that media circus, and uh, the media is like, "Why wasn't Zimmerman arrested with a gun?" Well, because he has a concealed carry, and that's reciprocal in thirty plus states. Thank God there they're, 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 they're are concealed carries because those have driven down crime on average over 25% in the first two years it's implemented. In some states, you see more than 50% drops in crime. Well, the national drop in overall violent crime uh, since 1991, according to the Justice Department, we've gone over this ad nauseum, uh, is 61%. Uh, and uh, no, no, gun violence, overall violent crime, 61%. Gun violence, 51%. And gun homicides, where people die, 49%. You can look those up for yourself. Uh, so uh, there you go. I mean, overall, more guns means less crime. And even though uh, the economy is imploding, and even though uh, people are leaving Detroit and, and, and other globalist-controlled areas and flooding cities like Austin, where I live, 
I saw a big study in the Austin Market Statesman a month ago that Austin has more poor people moving to it than any other city but Atlanta, which are both seen as quasi boom towns. Austin, number one, Atlanta, number two. Uh, and uh, you do see a lot of robbers and attempted carjackers getting their butts shot off, you know, a a as they move here from Chicago and as they move here from Detroit and as folks move here from New York City and they come bust into somebody's house and they're not there cowering in fear, they just shoot you with a shotgun. So there are, they, we are stacking up a lot of dead uh, hoodlums uh, around here. Uh, but the, the other side of that equation is the cops uh, are actually getting shot at more and things, something they're not accustomed to here in Austin, Texas, because uh, everybody's been so armed uh, in Texas. You know, it's not a very good idea to attack anybody, much, much less the police. There are a lot of cops now getting shot, so the, uh, it's not a ton, but more than it used to be all over Texas. So, yeah, uh, cops are killing a lot of innocent people now. That's not a very good idea, is it? So uh, we'll uh, talk to Shakari Jackson about that. But first, did you know the NSA director... Or the head of cybersecurity, General Alexander, got grilled at the Black Hat Hacker Convention. We're going to cover that. And Snowden granted one year asylum in Russia when we come back. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Alex Jones here, back live. If you go up to DrudgeReport.com, you can see all the latest news. Kremlin grants political asylum, WikiLeaks, refugee status. Uh, he certainly deserves it, and I hate to agree with the Russians, you know, our supposed ancestral enemy, even though they're not. We owe the Russians a debt of... Um, a debt of just incredible crimes committed by the globalists that run our country, actually overthrowing the czars and putting the communist in, unbelievable what the British and American people allowed our controllers uh, to do in 1917, and that's all on record. So you want to go, oh, they're the Russians, they're our enemies. That was all set up, folks. Uh, Kremlin grants political asylum, WikiLeaks refugee status. We have won the battle, but not the war. Now the war uh, into Russia for the next year. Obama meeting with lawmakers on NSA surveillance, NSA X key score sweeps up emails, social media, browsing history, you name it. Spy agency chief heckled at Black Hat Hacker Convention. That's an Infowars.com article. You're the greatest tech talent in the world. Help us, uh, he tells the hackers. Yeah, they're trying to take over the alternative media, the hackers, everybody. That's what this is with devalued dollars. And you do that, folks, everything falls. Uh, Twitter, government info request on rise. Netflix rolls out new tool to profile viewers. Yeah, it's the corporations that lobbied to have this built to then get billions a year. AT&T gets over a billion bucks a year, last time I checked, just to administer the NSA hubs in their systems. We're talking about big money here. They sell sometimes thousands of dollars per data request that's already automated. I mean, it is a huge moneymaker. And then they get to use the data and they share it with each other. This is a corporate world government. So when Alexander says, the head of cybersecurity, the head of the NSA, oh, I, I, you know, we don't track it with all this info and everybody, that's actually true. They're storing it, they're using it, and the government's kept on a medium leash what they can do. It's the 2,000 plus companies that have basically got access to everything. And the top Fortune 500, they have access to all of it. This is on record. I'm trying to explain this to you. The communist Chinese run the big data mining system in England and the U.S. That's BBC, one of the biggest. 
This is globalism. You give us control of your systems, the globalists say. China, you get the Panama Canal and you get our grid and you get to say what movies can come out. It's globalism. It's all to get rid of the nation state and play everybody off against each other. It is just incredibly diabolical. So I'm going to be breaking all this uh, down after Zakari Jackson comes in with the uh, new Trayvon Martin case that nobody has been covering uh, nationally. But this is really serious. But let's go to this clip from InfoWars.com with uh, Steve Watson. It was also on local CBS uh, with multiple security consultants heckling NSA head shouts freedom and read the Constitution. And then they said, hey, Alexander, you lied to Congress and you're lying to us. It shows the face of thousands of hackers. Black hat hackers and people that counter black hat operations. Yeah, that's nasty stuff, folks. Just shaking their heads while he's talking because they know the guy is a complete liar shoveling Bravo Sierra in their face. Let's play that clip. Stopping terrorism is one of the most important things. Oh, yeah, right. You run Al-Qaeda on record and exactly. everybody knows it. And with that, when you think about it. Notice he talks in that NPR voice, that non-threatening voice. We stand for freedom. Not that. <laughs> but I think what you're saying is that in these cases, what's the decision? Where's the discussion? And what tools should we have to stop those? No, I'm saying I don't trust you. <laughs> you lied to Congress. Why, why would we believe you're not lying to us right now? I haven't lied to Congress. What about SKS? Congressional testimony. Wait for the question session. Thank you for that. But I do think this is important for us to have this discussion because, in my opinion, what you quickly believe is that which is written in the press without looking at the facts. This is the greatest technical center of gravity in the world. I ask that you all look at those facts. Check that out. Read the congressional testimony. Look at what we're talking about here because this is our nation's future. And in there, if you listen carefully, somebody shouts out, read the Constitution. And there's more heckling, too. We have the full uncut video up on InfoWars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live and broadcasting worldwide from the InfoWars.com studios. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're going to continue looking at the NSA and the military and economic developments here after a report uh, with Jakari Jackson that's getting almost no attention nationwide. And the reason we're covering it is it, it shows how the media picks and chooses what it's going to uh, turn into a big scandal. They know you're already worn out uh, on the whole Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman situation. So now they are, uh, you know, just moving on. They've already created the division they needed. They've already worn everybody out. They're going to wait uh, to pick one of these cases later. But we're going to be discussing that here in just one moment. But first off, ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to invite everyone to go to InfoWarsHealth.com online. And when you go to InfoWarsHealth.com, you can find the lowest prices and free shipping for all of the amazing, close to 400, or I think it's over 400, longevity products like Pollen Burst Plus, the best natural uh, energy drink uh, booster out there. Just amazing. I love it so much. I've endorsed it, and I'm on the cover of the packaging. Uh, you've got the Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, Tangy Tangerine uh, Citrus Peach Fusion, uh, absolutely amazing, an 8,000 total ORAC score, certified non-GMO, pesticide-free Whole Foods. They also have the old Beyond Tangy Tangerine that I like as well, but it has a 5,000-something uh, score. This has the highest you can find anywhere, 8,000 score, certified, off the charts amazing. And your purchase makes the broadcast possible, so it's a win-win, win-win-win, shopping with the good guys. Whole foods, trace minerals, antioxidants, probiotics, prebiotics, amino acids, essential cofactors, and more. It's all up there. And now you wanted longevity beyond OsteoFX. They've now done it in powder form. 
the best for joints, you name it. But whether it's for memory, whether it's for organ health, whether it's uh, for allergies, whether it's for heart health, whether it's for skin health, it's all there at InfoWarsHealth.com. And there's also a toll-free number uh, up there on the InfoWars uh, Health dot com website 888-789-9277 888-789-9277 you can call and the infowars team of uh, great folks that we have can answer any of your questions help you sign up online if you need help uh, help you learn about different discounts you can become a distributor for ten dollars like costco a one-time fee and be part of the club and get other discounts so learn about the free shipping and everything at infowarshealth.com the journey towards better health Something the globalists absolutely hate and a clearer mind starts at InfoWarsHealth.com or InfoWarsTeam.com. There's a lot of videos and audio messages with doctors and pharmacists and researchers and myself and so much more at InfoWarsTeam.com and InfoWarsHealth.com. Okay. Looking at our society and the divide and conquer, it, it, it's done scientifically. And you don't see the so-called liberal black groups that are out there talking about 50 plus percent of black people being aborted. And that's the highest of any group. I mean, there's as much as 20 percent of uh, white folks abort their kids. And then it moves down to Hispanics and others. If I was Hispanics, I'd be proud that they're one of the groups that doesn't like to kill their kids. I think it's very, very shameful that, that, that anybody does that, obviously. But they sell it like you're just going to get, you know, a wart removed off your butt or something. And that's not really what abortion is. And now you see MSNBC almost every week and CNN going, you know, babies after birth. Let's kill disabled, uh, disabled babies. Or even you don't like the sex of them. It's your choice as a parent up to age three to kill your kid. And when we first broke that from the Journal of, uh, P of uh, Bioethics a, a few uh, years ago, people didn't believe it for about a week. And then finally it was national news that, that they were in there saying, let's kill kids up to age three, even if they're healthy, just... You know, we're, the bioethicists, they're going to decide uh, to decide if you're really alive or if your life's worth something. And, you know, old people, they're not really happy. Let's just kill them. That's why Mark Dice went out last week. We put the video up when he premiered it a few days ago on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We played clips of it here. And he showed everybody he talked to, only one person said, is this a joke? All the others said, oh, yes, uh, I think we should get rid of all the old people we should euthanize them. And it was old people saying it, saying, I don't want to be alive when I feel bad. Well, see, you're not going to be getting health care. You're going to get euthanized, ladies and gentlemen. And th this is the way of it. This is eugenics. This is how it started in Nazi Germany. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.